on that. What about digital marketing? Because I'm a marketing nerd. Yeah. 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 What are you doing there? Um, so my husband, Leonard, he was very um, astute in terms of really kind of capturing the Instagram market when it first came on board. And so he has about 22 sites, um, definitely over, you know, a million um of followers across those platforms, but then, um, you know, multi-millions, and he can kind of speak to those numbers um, in terms of his visibility and being able to awesome. market um, and advertise to the different subsets of groups that he has via those pages. So um, have you heard of, like, theme pages? Theme pages? Yes. What do you mean? So there might be a page that is, you know, I think, like, wealth.com um, is one, and it just – basically gives you all of these images and things based on wealth. And so they build up a huge market, um, a huge audience of people, millions, hundreds of thousands, where, you know, now they pay, um, they market for advertising mm -hmm. and you, in order to get your business in front of them, of course, you'll give them a fee sure. um, to be featured. And Love so that. it's like a featured page or a theme page. Love um, and so he's been able to do that, but then just manipulate it across markets. That's awesome. Fitness, yeah. Um, all sorts of things, news. It seems like that. once you've cracked like a code for one of those, oh, does yeah. it seem like you're able, it, then it's just like, it doesn't matter what the business is. Absolutely. You're just finding who the niche audience is. Absolutely. You're finding what kind of content they want. Absolutely. And going from there. Yeah. It's just like, you know, those that work um, a traditional nine to five, which you have those transferable skills. Like, yeah. Once you get good at that one thing and yeah. you know, like, Hey, I am really great at this. You can just continue to um, manipulate that skill. Yeah, or just process. utilize it, leverage right, 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 it. Right, right, like right. Yeah. I don't like the word manipulate. <laughs> I don't. Like, I hear the word manipulate, and I immediately Not think in a negative crime, right? Like no, ethics. no, you just alter it, or you adopt um, just a different business, a different style. Yeah, that same yeah. Skill. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're yeah. just dressing up a different, uh, the same skill yes. in a different way. You're leveraging it out in different platforms. Absolutely, I right. love that. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, do you want to get rocking? Yeah, we're ready to go. Perfect. Okay. He's gonna toss on the music, which means we're gonna get oh, started. Yeah. We'll hear it in this. <laughs> Okay, we'll hear it in our headset, good. but I'm going to just start off with intro, all right? Sure. I'm going to do a little test real quick. So, test time. This isn't the cue. Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh. cool. All right, ready? Nice. All right, here we go. And that's the intro music. <laughs> <laughs> so, quick. So, you're not from Delaware, but here investing in, in Delaware. What's your favorite part about Delaware? Like just a broad spectrum. Tax free shopping. <laughs> That's easy. That's easy. Are you are are you also one of the? Because uh, I know people that are like guinea pigs or 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 mules for online shopping. Oh yeah. Do you have friends that hit you up like, hey, can I send my stuff to your house? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> to avoid the tax. Oh yeah, absolutely. It happens all the time. Yep. I hear about that. <laughs> I think it's only Delaware people do that. Because I'm sure. Are there other shopping tax free states? Um. I'm sure there are, like, you know, Pennsylvania, you can go and you can do clothes, but it's not, you know. Only clothes. Right. That's weird. Wait, yeah. so it's, I didn't know that. There's different taxes based off different items? Yeah, so if you're um, buying, like, you know, just apparel, um, okay. you, there's no sales tax on apparel. What, okay, so what defines apparel then? Like, if, uh, I'm clothing. sure that. So I'm not from Philly. Huh. Um, and, uh, as a disclaimer, always, you know, talk to your accountant about that and all of those things. Yeah. But I do do a lot of shopping. Um, sure. Yes, I am a regular of King of Prussia Mall. So if you, go to a <laughs> if you go to a store there and you say... And I'm buying jeans or a shirt or something like that, yet yeah, there's uh, no tax on that. When you say... I guess now I'm confused because if you went somewhere and bought some clothes and some food, yes. it automatically would do the math on the register of I'm like sure. which gets taxed. Okay, yeah, got I'm you. Sure. Heard. All right. Well, let's get into you. Sure. So... Talk a little bit because you're, you're doing some really awesome investing opportunities. You're, you're taking on, like we were talking about earlier, different ventures with you and the husband on social media. Oh, yeah. But the reason you're here today is is coming up. We got the Newcastle County Investor Summit, yes, very of which you're a keynote that. speaker. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you're doing, uh, and, and I love that you, they brought you specifically on because when I heard how you're investing, it immediately piqued my interest because I'm like, I've never heard of that. And... and Yes, somebody's got to be doing it, but you never think, oh, that's an investment opportunity. So can you break down real quick, like who you are, what got you here and, and what exactly you're doing in the investing space? Absolutely. So my name is Yolanda Walker Young. Um, I, along with myself, it's Leonard back here Young, on live. Are, <laughs> <laughs> we are real estate um, investors and we really kind of specialize in those non-traditional um, asset classes. So um, we do have some 
you know, just general single family homes, some um, multifamily, but we love, love, love the mobile home market as I love well that. as the campground and RV. So the market. campground RV market is crazy. Oh, yeah. Let's get into that. What gets you into, because of course you can watch one Dave Ramsey episode. You can see uh, Grant Cardone yeah. talk for a bit and you'd be like, ah, I want to invest in real estate. Yes. <laughs> so like what, what got you initially into investing in real estate? So really just educating mm -hmm. um, myself um, and being open, um, mm -hmm. being a risk taker. What do you mean by being open? So a lot of people um, operate in fear sometimes. And so they may only want to do things that um, are that they've seen kind of growing up. Yeah. Right. So everybody kind of knows about traditional real estate investing, buying a single family home, renting it out. Um, potentially doing, um, a lot of people use where they, um, buy their home, they rent out, you know, a room or, oh, what's it called? Oh, like house hacking? Yes. Yeah. Like when hacking. you live in one side and you're renting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, going through, um, you know, those kind of traditional routes in order to get started. Um, so for us, you know, we did that not necessarily house hacking, but single family, um, graduating to multifamily and then really looking at, um, you know, what are some other ways that we can really kind of capitalize off of um, the multifamily, um, you know, um, I guess, distribution of risk because you have more people, you know, kind of paying you, um, right. which kind of offsets any losses. Um, but what are some other ways that we can get into real estate that may not be as competitive, right? So, of course, Delaware competitive Philadelphia, very competitive real estate market. When you look at other markets, um, you know, like, uh, for example, we have a couple properties in Alabama or even, you know, middle, lower Delaware, um, a little less competitive, mm -hmm. but also just um, allowing us to kind of um, hedge our bets by having, you know, just additional tenants um, or people, you know, that are paying us for um, rentals. And so that's one of the things that we, you know, really kind of started just educating ourselves more on. Mm -hmm. um, although, Where did you go for that initial like, hey, I don't know what exactly the details of this are, but it looks like there's an opportunity. How did you find that education? Oh, yeah. A lot of YouTube videos and a lot of <laughs> YouTube podcasts. Academy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I tell people that all the time, though. Oh, yeah. YouTube. Isn't it crazy that like, honestly, you could learn any one thing niche yep. down like yep. how to how to install brakes on an 86 jeep wrangler like there's a tutorial of some 40 year old dude Absolutely. showing you exactly how to do it yep. and you were able to find people that were investing yes and not just people but really good information um mm. that helped us really kind of do our due diligence you know what questions do you ask when you're looking to buy a mobile home park. I feel like that's where people what struggle issue? when they're getting into it. Absolutely, yeah. because you're, there are just so many things that could go wrong. So many. And if you aren't familiar with that, you know, like we didn't grow up um, in mobile home parks or RV parks. And so, you know, there was a little bit of fear yeah. um, in the unknown. But at the end of the day, it was one of those things that we were just really, really committed to doing. And so, you know, that's what I mean by being open mm -hmm. and by being a risk taker, just being able to say, okay, you know, I'm going to sit in this uncomfortability and we're just going to figure it out yeah. as it, as it goes. How, so I've, I've heard that before. And, and I think anybody, business owner, venture investor, you got to weigh the possible risks. Yeah. But you hear everybody that's successful say, you know, I saw the risk. Right. We ignored the risk. Right. We went forward. We built the plane on the way down. Yeah. How, 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 though, do you feel you were able to do that? Because that's terrifying from a lot of people's perspective. Oh, yeah. And probably still terrifying from your perspective. It, it is. You know, there's never a dull day um, at the campground. Like, we, <laughs> we literally had someone come camping, bring in a chicken coop and a chicken left, left the chicken coop. And the chicken and that was this wait week. they took the time to bring a chicken in a chicken coop and didn't even bring it back right right what right and so it's just like we're looking at each other like <laughs> yeah what'd you we, do with do the, we chicken? Evict the chicken yeah, do, do we evict keep the chicken? the chicken is it now an attraction you know what it's a petting zoo right put it on the website right and so there are all of these things that are going to happen that are not necessarily expected yeah. but you know as you progress as you learn as you network as you um you know just kind of like get the boots on the ground and go, yeah. you just get better. And yeah. so the fear kind of subsides and, you know, you just say, okay, 
here it is. Like, we're going to find a good home for this chicken because that's just not our lane. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, and we'll tackle the next thing as it comes along. Did you find a good home for the chicken? We did. Nice. Yes. And the new owner, he sent me a picture of the eggs that the chicken produced. <laughs> He's like, oh, first eggs. I'm like, great. I've heard people that have chickens love it just for that, just oh, for the yeah. eggs. Oh, and yeah. they're like, the eggs that you get at Walmart are nowhere near the eggs you get from a chicken. I'm sure, but I'm still going to go get those eggs from Walmart. <laughs> I hear you. I hear my, I, I got, I got a connection now. We get the eggs in. Yeah. And they, they are good. I'm sure. And they're, I feel like I'm just getting more nutrients. Oh, I'm sure. Less. I'm sure. Factory. <laughs> yeah, just oh, out yeah. of, yeah. Where, where do you stand on all that? Like a little, little sidebar, like. Have you been seeing just all the stuff like the, it's stuff in our food, oh, yeah, stuff in insane. our medicine, it's stuff insane. is everything. It's in everything. Um, it's scary because, you know, literally you can put in, I saw something like on the bottled water. And while you might think this water is great, you go to this site and it's really like a three out of 10 and you can buy, you know, a cheaper water and, you know, that water is better for you. And then don't buy water in a bottle, buy boxed water. So, you know, there are all of these different things. The only thing you can do is, you know, just try to educate yourself, of course, and just eat as healthy as possible. So we do lots of, um, of course, like markets and mm. things like that. Um, I'm a produce junk- junction junkie. Yes. Um, and then, you know, I'm Out okay there, paying a little bit more. Yeah. With like the mm-hmm. hormone free, the nitrate free, all of those things, yeah. you know. Yeah. Because it just, it matters. It does matter. It does matter. Yeah. And and it, it sucks because it's like every time you figure out one thing that's not good for you. You're like, right. oh, I've been oh, eating that for 30. Thing. Yeah, I've been eating that for 30 <laughs> years. Let's cut that one out. Right. And then it's like, exactly. You find out the next thing. It's like, okay, yeah. let me cut out Gatorade. All right, yeah. let me cut out soda. Oh, wait, bottled water is right. bad for me now too? Right. Like, what am I supposed to drink? Right. And it's really sad when you have um, kids because we've been trying to just, you know, educate them as they go like, hey, start looking at labels. And they're like, oh my gosh, we can't eat any of our favorite snacks. Like, what are we going to eat? You yeah. know? Um, and of course, none of the things that they like are super healthy for them. So that's that's always a thing. Yeah, it's that balance. We can get into the parenting side all day on oh, that. Yeah, but yeah. back on to the the because you said something earlier. I don't want to. I don't want to miss. Mm-hmm. You mentioned you again took the risk, but you took the risk on something that's a little bit more unique. Right? Do you, Do you feel like that made it easier, or harder for you because you didn't have as many maybe templates to follow? Right. Um, so I think that there is. Um, I see it as an added benefit. Some people may not. Um, But in going into business in partnership with your spouse, um, it makes you really kind of delve down into the details um, and gives you a sounding board um, and sometimes, you know, opposition as well. um, That really kind of makes you get really firm on, you know, your belief systems and what it is that you're doing. And so for us, when we first um, got into, you know, just that market, it was, hey, I heard this on a podcast. I think this is a great idea. And it was just like, yeah, okay, You know, and then it was like bringing that person along. But in order to bring that person along, like you also have to just do your homework. Mm -hmm. Um, Think about it from a very analytical standpoint, you know, just guessing like, okay, hey, he's going to ask about this. If this breaks, where are we going to get the money for this? How is this going to work? And so it just made me kind of like have answers to a lot of the questions that I know Mm -hmm. that he would have. Um, And so we just had a framework for how we would deal with um, all of just the preconceived things that we saw kind of going wrong. Um, and then once, you know, it was in there, he saw it, um, we were kind of like just exposed to it and we saw how other people were managing and, you know, kind of making money, then it was a no brainer. And so once you, or if you have, you know, a partner or somebody that you're working with and they just may not be on board with it, exposure is always really, really great. Right. But then also just, you know, what does that risk mitigation look like? Um, all of those if then scenarios, just having a list of things that you're going to do in the event you need to, you know, just kind of pull on um, some of that information for when things go wrong. And I feel like the the risk mitigation you're talking about Mm -hmm. is always like you're only able to find 40, 50 percent, maybe. Oh, yeah. Of the things that could go wrong. And then (laughs) you get in, you're like, wait, people are going to leave chickens behind. (laughs) Right, right, right. Like, we'll figure it out. It's crazy. We just sit and look at each other sometimes like, Okay, what what did we get into? Like, this is, <laughs> and how long have you different. owned it now? Um, so it's coming up on a year. We've coming had our up campground. On a year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would you buy it again? Absolutely, ten times that. Are ten. you going to buy another one? Absolutely, 
as soon as you find it. Absolutely. Do you absolutely. want it to be in Delaware? Um, we would love for it to be in Delaware. The thing about campgrounds and what we're seeing is that there are large corporations, of course, that are buying them up, just like, you know, a lot of um, and systemizing them. Here's yeah. your here's your water park. Here's a snack. Absolutely. Shop. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so the feel is different. And so we have a very different market um, versus like some of the traditional, um, you know, campgrounds. I will tell you, when we were looking and being vetted for buying this one, um, because we did buy it from a family, um, they showed us a stack of papers. <laughs> and it was like 30 offers from, you know, people that definitely um, had, you know, just resources, systems, companies, um, you know, Fortune To buy the campground. Companies. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so what we did was, you know, we just really honed in on the fact like, Hey, this is family owned and operated. Um, you know, our market is not necessarily like young kids, um, or, you know, families with like super young kids. We are more of a rustic getaway for people that just really, really love to camp. And so we have a lot of boomers, a lot of millennials that grew up camping with their parents that yeah. don't want like the commercialized feel of mm -hmm. camping. They just literally want to be outside, you know, have a drink with their friends and enjoy the weekend. Um, and so being able to just, you know, sell that point and, um, you know, be real about that missing segment from, you know, the market, um, I think really kind of help us just really, you know, number one, be able to secure the property. But then two, um, when we kind of came and then there were some campers that were already there, they're like, wow, we're so happy that you all aren't going to change this and, you know, make it into something else because it, it just, it just isn't, it isn't camping anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the goal long-term? Keep it that direction? I think so. Good. Um, only because, you know, Hey, we, we self fund most of our, um, most of our, like properties and things like that. And yeah. so when it comes to that, we don't have, you know, that Buffett behind <laughs> us or we don't have, you know, like a Sun Properties, you know, management company. They use Blue Water like behind us. And so a lot of the decisions and the day to day things that we do are literally, you know, just made at a table with our team. Um, and so I think so, because it really just gets to the heart of why people are coming. They're not coming for a Disney feel or for a resort feel. They're really coming to just unplug and get away and be one with nature. And that's what we want to constantly provide. And you don't need, you know, a water park and all of these steel structures and, you know, a pomp and circumstance when it comes to that. Big Yogi Bear. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong with that. You know, we love Yogi Bear. We love, you know, all of the, um, other campgrounds in the area, but you know, we're just, we're, it's, it's different. It's different. Oh yeah. What's the big difference? I mean, the, the initially, I know you said you have people who are like, thank you for not changing it. Mm -hmm. Love that stayed the same. What are you seeing now as you're a year in? I'm sure there's other pros that you've seen to this campground that you maybe didn't at first think you were going to have. Right. Right. Um, so, you know, for us, I feel like a lot of campgrounds are tailored towards, you know, kids, mm -hmm. um, and that's fine, but sometimes you want to get away from your kids. <laughs> sure. <laughs> or, and so you would know, you say this is more the adult, because you don't absolutely. have all the cartoony industrialized no, things, like you said. Like, no, yeah. not, not at all. And, you know, sometimes too, like you don't want your kids hooked on electronics um, yeah. on vacation. Sometimes, you know, you don't want it to be okay. Like we have to do this at eight, this at 10, this mm -hmm. at 12, um, you know, and your vacation is just, you know, super a big itinerary. Based. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so while we have a lot of amenities for kids, we have a pool, we have um, a new playground that we just built. Nice. We have, you know, long games where you can play cornhole um, and all of these things. We are not looking to like commercialize that experience. We're really wanting it to be a place where you can connect with your kids and with your family. And so we have a boardroom, which is where you're playing board games. You know, a lot of us don't play board games anymore. We play, um, you know, these gaming systems yeah. and the kids are so astute now with technology, but you know, what happens when your kids put their phone down for the weekend and you can literally show them how to skip rocks or, you know, you go outside and you play tag and you do all of these things that, you know, we kind of love doing growing up. It just, you know, it, it gives you those core min uh, memories, um, those just key things like, oh, yeah, I remember when my dad, you know, showed me how to do this at this campground. Mm. And so a lot of times we hear those stories and we have families that come back year after year after year 
for those experiences. Um, and that's something that you can't necessarily get, you know, when you see a parade and, you know, all of these like tractors and you know, yeah. all of these other All the pomp and circumstance, exactly, like you said. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, exactly. and you're getting into actually camping. Exactly. So was that a, so so for real though, was that a passion of yours that led into an investment or is it, because it, se- it seems like it's just a benefit right. that you're getting while also it's supporting your your lifestyle. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, and that's incredible that if you can line those two things up. Yeah. Anybody that knows me, they know I'm a hotel girl. Like uh. I'm not sleeping outside. <laughs> <laughs> I need like a little bit of luxury in my life, I hear especially you. on vacation. I hear so, you. So, you know, um, even a lot of like our customers are like, wait, you're one of the owners, no. you know? Yeah. Like I would have never picked you. For the hubby more of a camper. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. But y'all are providing an opportunity. Exactly. Y'all are providing the it, opportunity. It was something that, you know, we just kind of like. It really kind of fell into. So mm. I'll tell you, we have a blended family. And um, five years ago, 2019, we took our first camping trip. Mm. Like with our kids, we rented a camper. We went up to Niagara Falls, you know, and that was like amazing. So then we decided to do it again. Um, had a really negative experience oh, renting no. a camper. I know. So I was like, you know what? We're going to go buy one, um, you know, instead of having to deal with all of this. And okay. so we bought one. And that was really kind of like our first taste of like out being outdoors. outdoors. Yeah. The yeah, camping being lifestyle. Outdoors. Um, and you know, they bulked and they complained, but I'll tell you, we had the best time just dancing outside, making, um, s'mores, cooking over the fire. It was just so amazing. Um, and so I get the benefit and I understand why people love it. Um, if you were asking preference, I'm still, you know, preferring a five star resort. I, listen, Preferably five star resort over a tent in the woods. I completely oh, yeah. oh, understand yeah. that debate. But it's completely not, but it's that. nice to have, you know, a weekend getaway and to be able to do that. It's super and, good. Yeah. It's yeah. super healthy. I so I, I have a I have one weekend every single and I'm gonna make it a week this year. Oh yeah. Without the phone. Yeah. Without technology. Yes. Out in some cabin, out yes. in PA, Virginia. Just because if you don't do that. To me, I feel like technology is just so much a part of our life. Absolutely. I mean, just look at the room we're in. I mean, there's Absolutely. so much technology that's Absolutely. just a part of our life. Mm-hmm. And I really honestly think that we forget. We do. We forget that we are self-sufficient. Yes. That we're, I'll give you a perfect example. Just bef- this morning, I forgot my phone at home. Oh. All right, I forgot my phone at home, yeah. right? And I'm driving my baby girl to school. I'm 20 minutes to school. Mm-hmm. It's a 30-minute ride. Bring her up to the little school in Dover. And I'm like, I don't Did you feel know. frantic? What happened was family grabs the phone, says, hey, meet me here. Oh. I'm like, okay, thank you. I'll meet you there. And then I'm, I am start driving like two minutes and I'm like, I don't know where this is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Magnolia. Oh, yeah. But I don't, it, they gave me a road name. And for some reason, my room was like, okay. And then I walked into the car, start driving. I'm like, wait, I don't have an itinerary of all the road right. names. My phone does. Right, right. And so I. I We're dependent on yeah, it. Yeah, but I found myself, I wasn't listening to the radio. I wasn't doing it. I was focused. I was looking at the road signs. I was doing this in the third. I was like, I am self-sufficient. I can oh, do yeah, this. Yeah. And it's, it's, it sounds so just dystopian to even say that but like you go a week you go a weekend yeah. of not subconsciously continuing just what's on my phone another ding another notification did i check my email what's going on in this dm right. like all the time oh yeah it, it allows you to reset i can yeah. say that you know for us we were super dependent on our phones just you know being investors and having rentals and you know even we have some um short-term rentals where we're doing like airbnb on a couple of our properties mm-hmm. and just being in houston at the campground um just the byproduct of just being outside like we're not as dependent it's kind of like you know i'll check it when i check it yeah um and it feels different. Yeah. It's a it's a slower. It's pace. The, I think you mentioned the mention the word the dependence. Yes, dependence. On Absolutely. Because I felt in that moment when I didn't know how to get there. Oh yeah. I felt that. Oh, I had dependence on oh, the yeah. phone. Like oh, I can't do this. Yep. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. There. And so just being in that setting as a reminder that you don't have to be so dependent and so like something odd. primal about it. Exactly. There's something primal about it gets yeah. unlocked. I think, yeah. especially for men. Oh yeah. Especially for men. <laughs> I feel you build a fire. Oh, you do the whole yes. deal. So like, I'm oh, good. Yes. I'm good. And we get a lot of that. A lot of like bro weekends where you bro know, weekends are coming. Yes. Um, NASCAR is a big one. So really, yes, down in Houston. Oh yeah. Um, we have a lot of people that stay at um GNR campground okay. and they just ride all the way up to mm-hmm, yeah, go to the races way. come back and 
you know, have a great weekend. And we have cabins for those that I don't feel have that. Oh, RVs. you have cabins too. Nice. I feel that's better than some people would have to say at the RVs. Oh, yeah. Camp, which is just like, yeah. they're like sardines out there. And that's that's why a lot of people stay with us because, um, and we have a group that comes every single year. They've been coming for like 15 years, which yeah. is so insane. Yeah, but it's like a group of friends. They rent like a tent site. They have their food there and they just graze all day. And sit it. by the fire and connect Chill. with each other. And that's their, like, one weekend a year for everybody to just, like, hey, you know you're not doing anything NASCAR weekend. We're going to go to the races. We're going to come back. We're going to, you know, Chill connect out. with each other. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, it is so cool. So I can I can appreciate those experiences for sure. And I know that when they leave every year, you know, last year was our first year with them. But they told us, you know, and we could just see the difference. It's kind of like a weight lifts off of you. And it's like, okay. I think I'm ready to get back into it. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and it's GNR campground, yes, right? Yes, GNR campground. GNR campground. I have to ask. I don't see. I haven't seen a sign. I haven't yeah, seen. A, yeah. I don't know why. I don't know you guys don't exist. Yeah. Sean, Sean, and I are. We're, we're planning our camp for this week or this uh this spring. Oh yeah. We were talking with Mac about where we wanted to go. Now I'm yeah. now I'm thinking we need to go to your spot. So you know. Uh, Do you have a website? Absolutely. Sean, can you pull it up? GNRcampground.com. You already had it pulled up. That's uh -huh. crazy. And the yeah. Instagram. It's already here. Reserve your spot. Those are some giant sequoias. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's stock footage. That's stock footage. <laughs> that's not in Houston. But if you go down, um, uh -huh. we have our, uh, we have like a, um, a gallery of pictures and you see everything like we just had okay. something for Easter with all of the kids. It Love was that. super cute. First ever cornhole tournament. Oh yeah, we're doing that. Gym we jam. have music, um, you know, music festivals, yeah. annual car shows. Okay. Yeah, you guys are going to have to start coming out. We're going to have, yeah, more. we're going to have to come out. Right. No problem at all. Right, right. Campground video. Mm -hmm. We have a nice tour of the grounds. Okay. Um, 200 sites. Yeah. We accommodate solo travelers, groups of a thousand or more. Oh, Jeez. Yeah. Yep. That's a big whole group. Oh, yeah. You ever had a big group like that? We have. Yeah. yeah How'd that have. go? Um, busy <laughs> what brings that many people like uh like so like, definitely our music um festivals um okay. we host oh, several of them yep um the del marva music festival as well um in june we have the black music festival which is june 1st after that we have june jam um which brings you know a couple thousand as well car shows i gotta get you connected with uh you know alexis harris uh she's a first state destinations girl on okay. instagram i'm gonna have to get y'all connected because oh, she absolutely. we were just talking about she wants to find more southern things to, to do, do. Oh, like yeah. southern delaware because she's from up in wilmington okay yeah. um and we we were going back and forth on what can we what can we do what can we uh, collab yeah. on down here and it's so great we live um well we are in newcastle county in newark mm -hmm. yeah and so it's you a know, different it, life down here it is <laughs> it's a different life it is definitely a different life yeah do you prefer yeah. one over the other i'm assuming you're your new castle above the canal oh yeah if you could live there stay there that would be where you're at yeah um you know i i say that but i also like the slowness of where i am and not having to like be on call i feel yeah. like you know the further up north you are it's like okay i have all of these things to do yeah. You know, and then there's the enticement of the restaurants and the mall and, you know, Costco and all of a lot of stuff you can do. Right. Yeah. You know, where we are, it's kind of like, OK, like it's a I have to make a plan if I want to go, you know, somewhere like do I want to go up to Dover or can mm -hmm. I get it in Camden or, you know, is the Walmart in Milford enough? Um, and just by, you know, just the sheer um, the distance sometimes it's kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'll, I, make, I'll make that one weekly trip. I think it and, is and the I'm distance. Oh, yeah. I, the distance does something because Absolutely. even the military, they say getting away from the flagpole. Oh, yeah. Like if we have someone that's coming in from the, mil you know, they're coming in from Washington state, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, I, I you know, I, I want to live because I always want to be near the base, but I don't want to be right. near the base. I'm right, like, yeah, right. you want to be away from the flagpole. I'm like, you want to be within 30 minutes, but farther than 10. Yeah. It's like, yeah, and like, that's exactly it's the same way with everybody. Yeah. It's exactly like you get away that. from work, you get away from the hubbub and like your brain just does something. I, it does something. Mm -hmm. It's not even logical. Yeah. Because your to-do list world. doesn't go away. Your tasks right. are still there. The deadlines are still there. Right. And it's so crazy because, you know, like my husband, he'll say it all the time. He's like, do we even live here when we go, you know, up home? Up, yeah. Up, you know, if, to in work. Philly, yeah. yeah. Um, and so it's just, it's so crazy. It's so crazy because it's just, it's a different world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you got your hands on one of the campgrounds that kind of is commercialized, would you decommercialize it? 
No. No? Yeah, they make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Different <laughs> options. We went to that one. Uh, what was the one called uh, we went into? I forget what the name was, Sean. It was, uh, it was one of the... Uh, it was one of the Yogi the Bear ones. Park, right? yeah. yeah, it was one that of was the Yogi the Bear. Was it Oh, with the yeah. horses. With the in horses. Virginia. Yeah. I didn't yep. see any horses. Really? Did y'all see any horses? No. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't really look that hard, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we really left the campground. Oh, wow. I mean, I did. I had a broken leg at the time. It was, oh, no. it was yeah, it was one of my worst you games. Bad, yeah. Badminton championship. Yeah, oh. I did get to referee the badminton championship. <laughs> okay. Go figure, there's no real refereeing needed in the badminton match. Right. <laughs> I'm like, did you just sit? Yeah, I just sat. Yeah, I just sat and watched back and forth. It's great matches. <laughs> I would watch them over again. Was, I got the Masters today. March gotcha. Madness just ended, but I would still go back to that birdie oh, for that awesome. badminton competition. Awesome, awesome. Super competitive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's cool about camping, too, because you get, you know, badminton, cornhole, frisbee, yeah. all these games, like you said, that you don't Absolutely. you don't remember how much you enjoyed playing right. tag right. until you get to playing tag. Right. Like, Tether oh, ball. Great. Tether like, ball. Yeah. That's the ball with the string around the <laughs> pole, right? Absolutely. Man, I punched that pole so many times oh, yeah, on accident. So fun. Yeah. Fun's a word. Yeah, I got beat every single time. <laughs> What's the one they play on the beach? I don't even know if it's a campground game. Is it a spike ball? You want yeah. the net in the middle? Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. a campground game? It is. We have okay. that. Yep. I, yep. I want to get in the uh, spike ball. I just feel like <laughs> I'm gonna hurt myself. Oh yeah. I'm too competitive. Yeah. I'm a dive. Yeah. I'm a jump. Yeah. They're I'm, gonna they're gonna look at you and say hey, it's not that serious. Yeah. Like man, yeah. chill. Like chill, you're chill. you're playing kids. Like relax. Oh yeah. <laughs> so a long term goal. Let's talk that. Yeah. What what is your first of all? I know you're again you're you're keynoting. The Investor Summit coming up is April 25th. Absolutely. Investor Seminar. Mm -hmm. Are you going to bring up some of, some of your long-term goals in the investing space? Do you know uh, what you're talking about yet? Yeah, I think we do. Okay. I think we do. Um, so, I'd love to know. you know, I know that, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, you know, talk to us about, you know, this investment. Like, what, what does it look like? Um, and why and what are some of the things that we've done to really kind of like force appreciation and make updates and... Um, you know, do some of the just technical investment things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's probably the nuts and bolts of what we are going to discuss. Um, but, you know, for us, we just have a list of things that um, really kind of like tickle our fancy and that we want to just check off the list. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I don't want to say what they are. I'm not, I'm one of those people like, I want to do it first. Before sure, I say yeah. It. yeah. Be about it. But yeah, absolutely. But um, there are are just you know some additional um you know rv parks and campground goals that we have set that we you know definitely want to get to within the next three years for sure i love that yeah i love that are you guys doing uh any events here so you said june you had one coming up right yeah so we um we're doing a ton of things this summer so yeah. every weekend on friday nights we're doing movie night um Outdoor movie? Outdoor movie, nice. under the trees, and we do have an in, um, an indoor area. Okay. Um, we are also doing, like, crafts and things like that on Saturdays. Um, and But, I mean, there's a lot of um, amenities and things that, you know, people can do on site. Like I said, we have cabins, so if you're not into tin camping, you can stay in a cabin or, you know, rent an RV. Um, there are lots of sites now that have RVs, kind of like Airbnbs. You can get them delivered. You stay in them. You can, you know, kind of go. Um, Wait, say that again. So you can, like, have an a RV delivered, you said? Oh, yeah. I yeah. never – explain that. So there are sites, um, and I'll give you two for an example, um, RV Share or Outdoorsy. Okay. You can rent from, you know, a private owner. Um, and you can either have it delivered or you can go and pick it up. Um, if it's a motor coach, you know, you can drive it to wherever you want it to go. And, I mean, you can order, like, right there on the site. That's crazy. Absolutely. It's such a huge market now. You know, really yeah. the pandemic kind of, like, made everybody kind of get back to going outside and decompress and, you know, just release some of the some of the tension that we have, you know, just working nine to fives and living day to day lives. But um, we get a lot of people that will do that. That's um, awesome. Oh, yeah. Especially families that are coming for family reunions, church groups. Yeah. Um, all of those types of organizations, they they tend to do that. That's I've never heard of that, but yeah. that makes so much sense. Absolutely. So much sense, because exactly like not everyone has the money for the t just like you don't have the money for you know a great vacation home oh, so yeah. get an Airbnb absolutely and I'll tell you a quick story we um <laughs> before we even got into this market we bought an RV um 
because we were supposed to go on a trip. Okay. Somebody denied us. And then, you know, here we go. So I was like, we're going to buy one. I don't want to ask anybody else for one. We bought yeah. one and then we listed it on the site. We made our money back. Like within that year, it was so insane how often it rented. Wow. Literally every weekend. It was how much are you able to summer. rent something like that for per night? Um, it obviously depends on the quality. It the, does. Yeah. It does. So anywhere from like $65 a night to like some of the motor coaches, probably like four or $500 a night, but they're nice. Yeah. It's basically a house on <laughs> they wheels. Are, oh, it is definitely. And delivered nice and picked up. On wheels. Oh yeah. Some of the brand new ones are beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yep. So it just depends on, you know, how many people you need to sleep. Of course, the size and then the type, yeah. if you're towing it or if it's something that's drivable. That's it. I'm going to look into that. Oh yeah. Cause I, I, so I'm former military. Yeah. I've been done the whole overseas thing. I've done yeah. the woods of Georgia. I've done yeah. I've I've done it. Yep. I don't want to camp on the dirt. I right, don't I, I right. really do want to glamp. Yeah. Like honestly, like yep. I'll go like for me, like give me give me twelve hours. Right. Of like, let's go hike. Right. Let's walk through the creek. Yeah. Let me get my hands nasty. Right. Let's look at a deer. Yeah. But then when it comes for like, let's go to bed. Right. I need a fan. Yeah. <laughs> I need a blanket. I need a pillow. Even oh, where my sleeping yeah. conditions were last time, Sean yeah. still had me sitting there like, mm, this is a little, yeah. <laughs> this is a little much. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah <laughs> Heard my yeah. boy snoring in the other room. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to punch him. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah. stand up right now, but I'm going to punch him. <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I'm bougie with my sleep. Yeah. No, glamping is a thing. And so am I. And so one of the, the first changes that we made when we bought um, the campground, you know, Again, most of our customers, they like it rustic and they really enjoyed what it looked like. Um, for those of us that prefer glamping, yeah. we did make some updates. And so on one just, of the cabins, oh, or a couple yeah, of cabins? A, nice. a, several of them okay. um, enlisted, you know, a couple on Airbnb as well. Wow. But just updating, you know, nice floors, yeah. um, updated appliances inside. So, you know, they come with um, sinks and cooktops and, you know, just making it pretty. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I put I a hear. Little, but you still got some of the ones that are the older one style. Yes, yeah. for those that you know come for NASCAR and that want to drink their beer or you know come yeah. for their hunting trips and they're just see like, a few oh, spiders right, in the corner. I don't want any decorative pillows in my <laughs> room. Right, no decorative <laughs> pillows. They're they're not in there. It doesn't look like it came straight out of Hobby Lobby. It's just just a, maybe okay. a sign that says I came to hunt and fish. Right, maybe right, that's about right. it there's for some decor. Antlers, there's some antlers, antlers on the wall. around. Exactly. Maybe a football somewhere exactly. to throw around. Exactly. Yep. Gotcha. What would you say is like the thing that surprised you most about like because I'm I love the conversation around what people start doing mm -hmm. when they're when they're given all these non tech options. Oh yeah. Like. I find myself all the time, if that scenario presents itself, happened the other day. It was an Easter dinner. Me and my brother-in-law looked at each other and we're like, you want to kick the soccer ball? <laughs> like, it's just like, oh, all right. So what, what do you, where are you surprised people take on the most, like, that people do yeah. to kill the time? Um, so it's so amazing because especially in summer, we have a lot of seasonal um, people that will um, just make it a lifestyle. They'll come for one visit and then they're just like, hey. How do we, you know, how are we able to do this more? And so yeah. we have a lot of people that live here in Dover mm -hmm. that, you know, have bought an RV or they have one. And then they come park it from April to September. And literally Thursday through Monday or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're there. And it's kind of like they're home away from home. Whoa. And it's literally a community. Um, yeah, so you have certain people that are living there oh, yeah. and they link up with each other. Okay. Yeah, so I or, won't say I won't say living cause, because it's not like they're a not traditional living there, landlord tenant. Right. Um, yeah, for, situation. for anybody out there, <laughs> they're not living there, I promise. But, you know, we do have monthly and they can just renew every single month. That's what I was going to um, ask, how yes. the cost works. And, um, and it's amazing. Um, and, you know, that's a great benefit for us because of course we're able to charge and for an RV. Yeah. That. For an RV. Exactly. For you, yeah. it's, it's, you're lowering your vacancy, right? Oh, yeah. You're getting guaranteed people there, which oh, is yeah. great. So you're probably even charging a lower amount for that monthly because yes. you have the guarantee. Absolutely. What is the charge of having someone just like, cause they're just basically renting the ability to be in that dirt, yep. be hooked up to electric and water. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, and sewer. Sewer. Yeah. Um, so six thirty to six forty a month. That's not bad at all. No, and then whatever their electric usage is. Got it. Yes, and so one of the things that we did to also kind of just force appreciation, you know, again because it was an investment, was to buy a honey wagon. <laughs> What's a honey wagon? So, um, it was a nice little ten thousand dollar investment, and it's basically like this big jug that you hook onto the back of a truck, and you. Remove all of the honey from all of the RVs, if that makes sense. So all of the waste, um, because not all of our sites are um, hooked up for sewer. So that Got way, it. if you you know want to be out in the field or um, 
want to, you know, like we had, um, you know, maybe half of our sites might yeah. be full hookup. The other half, we are able to just dump utilize for that you. machine exactly. That's good, and then still be able to, you know, kind of make um, the same amount off of those particular spots, which gotcha. you know, again, was just a great value add for us. Yeah, and if yeah. you do the math, of, hey, this costs us ten k. How long oh, did it take yeah. to work off? Probably not long. Yeah, no, not. I, we made it back within the first two months that's awesome oh yeah but that so that but that's tiny stuff because again we're talking about a campground right it's not something that everyone looks at like oh this is a luxurious real estate investment property right, people right. go there and like oh it's a campground but you don't think even when you're attending it right. those tiny things right. that that business owners have to lose sleep over yeah, yeah. like how are we going to get your shit out of here? Right. Like, right. is a worry of yours. No, yeah. And no, that's for real. <laughs> it, 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 honestly, and like, yeah. it, it, like for me, like, oh, you get to walk through houses all day. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, nobody gets to see the full picture. Right. And so it's really interesting because I've never talked with anybody that's seen this picture. Right. And it's interesting because even I am like, okay, like, yeah. it's a bunch of dirt, come park and then leave when you're done with the dirt. Yeah. But there's so many logistics involved, I'm sure, that we Absolutely. haven't even got close to covering. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's been the hardest part that you didn't understand or realize or see before it happened? Because, you know, like you said, the people being able to connect and grow this community, mm -hmm. something you didn't expect, that's awesome. What's something you didn't expect that maybe is on the <laughs> negative angle? <laughs> I'm like, man, this sucks. <laughs> so I'll It's say, all great. It's all perfect. No, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> so I'll say um, when we looked at it, we didn't necessarily look at it as a hospitality service. And campgrounds are, you know, hospitality. And so, you know, we really kind of have to look at it like a hotel. Mm. Um, and then sometimes even as an apartment building, um, you know, kind of when it comes to the people that are like monthly or seasonal um, and just how we operate based on like from a customer service standpoint, um, you know, you mentioned, you know, hey, I hadn't heard of this place. Well, you know, we bought it from a baby boomer and a lot of them are just like, hey, you know, we'll have a website, but you know, this was like our first year doing online reservations mm -hmm. um, and just automating a lot of the processes and things. And then utilizing, you know, just um, online marketing to attract um, even social media, like a lot of those things they weren't necessarily doing. And so having to do all of that, of course, from Getting scratch, it started, exactly. Yeah, it but then just, you know, kind of, training ourselves on you know what does hospitality look like especially from an outdoor perspective. yeah what does hospitality yes. look like in an outdoor setting like that obviously you're not like saying oh here's your fresh towel right like, but but right. what does it look right. like so you know it is everything from you know and again we're a family-owned business a lot of the campgrounds that are in delaware are managed um you know by a management company mm -hmm. Or, you know, a, a large company. And there. you guys aren't hiring a large management. You, you've hired from within for your management? Yeah, or? We've hired from <laughs> online. Okay. Um, yes. Well, well so when we I say self, hire from within, but like you have your own, you're managing your own. Yes. Got it. Yes, yeah, but you've brought them in. Got it. Absolutely. Um, and so it's really, you know, our team, it's myself, my husband, um, our maintenance crew, um, the people that work in the office, the cleaning team, um, and then like our caterers and, you know, some third party vendors that we bring in for events. And that's it um, at this point, you know, because we really wanted to understand the business. What does this look like when people are coming? They're really looking um, at this as a vacation. What are their needs? How do we make sure that we have everything on hand yeah. prior to us coming in? Um, you know, there was an office. There really was not a store. And so creating merch, um, bringing in all of the things that, you know, campers need, whether it's like small items, you know, food items, um, firewood, like kind of just having those systems. Reusable totes. Exactly. Yeah. Reusable totes. Um, information that, you know, they may need putting in a pamphlet and just saying, hey, here you go. Um, for those that um, we kind of know, like, hey, if you... Um, don't really like to sleep outdoors. Okay, well, what is it that what what is it that we can do to make you more comfortable yeah. for those individuals that don't have RVs, but you know that want to bring this to life? Like, hey, we do have relationships with those um, companies like out, RV Share and Outdoorsy, where you know there are people that come and bring their RVs all the time, and so we can help with that if somebody is like, hey, you know, we're sold out of cabins this week. How do we get more of our people here? Yeah. Um, and so those are just like those checks in the box that, you know, if you're working front line at a hotel, you may 
have some of those things at your disposal, but that we had to kind of learn on the fly, just talking with our customers and, and being able to service their needs a little bit better. Sure. Yeah. So while it may not be, you know, like a Hilton or, you know, a Marriott or something like that. But no one's like expecting that. that. Yeah. The fact that you guys are even taking any of that into consideration oh, yeah, is absolutely. an upgrade. Absolutely. I feel what anyone's expecting out absolutely. of a campground experience. Absolutely. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Where can people connect with you? Where can people connect with the campground specifically? Sure. So we are online, um, GNRcampground.com, on Instagram, GNR Campground, Facebook, um, facebook.com backslash GNR campground. Um, we're on YouTube. So if you'd like to take a look, um, you know, we have a really cool video and then some shorts. I think uh, we saw, can we pull up that one video that was, was that the one on your front page? Yeah. Yep. It gives we you pull a that nice up? tour. We have 35 acres, um, you know, and we host lots of different events. And so if you're looking for retreats or, um, church conferences, mm -hmm. yoga, mm -hmm. um, all of those sorts of events are things that, you know, we host at um, at the campground. Yeah, because you said upwards of a thousand people. I mean, oh, that's yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we also, okay. um, yep, and we're on TikTok at GNR Campground. Yeah, we love that. Yeah. GNR Campground. Mm -hmm. I don't got any audio, but it's all right. I don't know <laughs> if there is audio. I think for this one, we left it plain, and then we have that's one fine. with some music. That's yeah. fine. So there's our um, overflow, Beautiful. like when the... Um, okay, overflow area. Mm -hmm. We also do storage. So those are RVs that are stored at the campground. Oh, for, mm -hmm. oh this looks so nice. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's really cool. We have lots of trees, so it's shaded, and you're the not The trees just are out. everything. They are. I've been to they campgrounds that feel like you're just out in a field. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Small tree alley. Absolutely. Nice. So... Um, we have bath houses where, you know, you can come take a shower, all of those things. Here are those the, cabins. Are the cabins. Oh yeah. We have, um, 15 cabins. We just did a hammock park. If you've been to Philly Spruce street park and you've no. seen, Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Oh, is this one of the inside of the cabins? Yeah. Holy cow. See? Yeah. This is nice as heck. <laughs> this is nice as heck. Holy cow. Yeah. That's a hotel. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was you saying, honey, I look I right. need a hotel experience. I need somewhere that I we need stay. to bring a hotel here. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so some of them are really nice and then some of them are definitely more rustic. So, Heard. Yeah. Okay, they're the hammocks. Oh yeah, but then at night we have like the lights, um, and it's it's really pretty. Sounds it looks like a like vibe. Spruce Street Park if you've been to Philly and in, in there. So it was just in Philly, but they have Spruce Street. Yes, but Spruce you have Street. to go at night so you see the lights. And okay. I feel like they only do it. Um, it's seasonal. Oh, this is sure. store. Yes. So that was another one of the things that we, you know, so just kind of added. And it looks a little different because we've updated it, you know, again. Um, oh, there's the badminton there. Oh, yeah. oh and, we're balling up. And this was before our um, our playground. And then we added like, a bunch of other, like, lawn games and things like that. So, yeah, we're gearing up. This is awesome. Yeah. We're going to have to get out there. Absolutely. It's, it's going to be a bet that you're going to find Absolutely. us out there over the summer. Absolutely. Any uh, event you're looking forward to the most this summer? And then we'll finish up. Um, really the event at the end of the month with the new Castle County Chamber of Commerce, that, yes. that investing, um, event and just, you know, talking about the road that we kind of went through to get here. Um, I'm very, very excited about that because people are always asking and we've been so busy, like, trust me, <laughs> running yeah. a campground is like boots on the ground. I get why people hire management companies and all of that, but we really wanted to learn yeah. the business um, before we expand so that, you know, we just have a comfort level because it is, it is a completely different beast than, you know, some of our other investments. I think you're so wise for that. Oh, yeah. I think you're so wise for that. So many people want to skip the work and then they've right. learned and the more problems they could ever find and then they don't know oh, how yeah. to solve them because they never did the work. Exactly. So that's great. Exactly. Appreciate you being on here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much and I'll see you in a couple of weeks at the conference. Okay. Awesome. See you then. Awesome.